the people I was staying with have a friend, a young lady, and uh, she was at um, downtown at one of Malcolm X's um, addresses, speeches, and lo and behold, who should plop down in the seat next to her but Johnny <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So right away, that whetted my curiosity, and I wanted to know how many times you had seen him and what you thought of him when you saw him and so forth. That so was the only time. Were you impressed with him? Definitely. What did was, you, oh, go on. Well, that, that was the only time I had to. I felt I had to see the man, you know, and uh, I was living downtown. I was in the hotel, and I, and I saw the posters and realized that he was going to be over there. So I, I, I just said, "Well, I'm going over there, you know, and see this guy because I've never seen him." I was quite impressed. That was one of his last speeches, wasn't it? I mean, well, it was the end of his. Towards the end of his uh, career. Uh, some musicians have said that there's a relationship between um, some of Malcolm's ideas and the music, especially the new music. Do you think there's anything in that? Well, I think that uh, music uh, being an expression of the human heart or of the human of the being itself does express just what is happening. So then if... Uh, oh. it, 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 I feel it, expre it expresses the whole thing. The whole of a human experience at any particular time that is being expressed. Um, what do you think about the phrase "the new black music" as a description of some of the newer styles in jazz? Well, uh, I don't know. Phrases, I, I don't know. It, uh, they don't mean much to me. Because uh, usually I don't make the phrases, so That's right. I mean, it's, I don't, I don't react so much to them. I mean, it makes no difference to me one way or another what it's called. If you did make the phrases, could you think of one? I don't know what the hell. I, I don't think I have a phrase. I don't have. The, I don't think there's a phrase for it. You see? Well, the people that who, I could make. The people who use that phrase argue that jazz is particularly closely related to the black community, and it's an expression of what what's happening there. That's why I, I asked you about. Yeah, well, I think it, I think it's, it's up to the individual. Uh, you can call it what you may, for uh, any reason you may. Myself, I I uh, I, uh, I I I recognize the artist, and I I, I I I recognize an individual. I see his contribution, and when I know a man's sound, well, to me, that's him. You know, that's this man, and that's what I recognize. I'm not all like labels. I don't bother with shit. But it does seem to be a fact that most of the changes in the music, the innovations, have come from black musicians. Or yeah, well, agree? this is how it is. Have you ever noticed, since you've played all over the United States and in all kinds of circumstances, have you ever noticed that the reaction of an audience varies uh, or changes if it's a black audience or a white audience or a mixed audience? Have you ever seen that the racial composition of the audience seems to determine how the people respond? Well, sometimes yes, and sometimes no. Any examples? Some, well, no. I mean, sometimes it it might it might appear to be one you you might say. Well, it's hard to say, man. You know, sometimes people like it or don't like it, no matter what color it is. You don't have any preferences yourself about what kind of an audience you play for. Well, to me, it doesn't matter. What kind you know, of I, just, I, just, I only hope that whoever's out there listening, I hope they're enjoying it. That's the, you know, they're not enjoying it. Rather not be there. If people do enjoy the music, how would you like them to demonstrate this? Do you like an audience that's perfectly still and unresponsive, or do you like an audience that uh, reacts more visibly to the music? Well, I guess I like an audience that uh, uh, does show. It's, uh, you know, what they feel. Or I, respond, I I remember sometimes when you played the jazz workshop in San Francisco, you really got that kind of an audience that you didn't get when you played Shelley's Manhole in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to me that that had some effect on the music. That, that yeah, because it in. seems to me that the, the, the audience, the, the audience, by in, in listening, there is a, an act of participation going on there, you know. And, uh, and when you know that uh, somebody is maybe moved or... Uh, the same way that you are to a such degree or approaching the degree, the degree you are, it's just like having another member in the group.
Is that what happened? Yeah, it's like, you know, is that what happened at the Ascension date? Uh, people who were there, did they get that involved, for example? I, I don't know. Uh, I was so darn busy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I was worried that there. that was mine. You know, that's the way I felt. I couldn't really enjoy the date as if it, as if it hadn't been a date. If it hadn't been a date, then I would have really enjoyed it. But the date, I'm trying to get the, you know, time, everything oh, set. Good. And I was just too busy myself. But uh, I don't know. I, I hope they uh, felt something. You know, what they felt this. To hear the record, I mean, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed all of the individual classes. That's a beautiful record. That. That's probably the one record that I've had to listen to the most number of times to get you know, that we, everything that's Yeah, happening. we got another take out yeah. on it now. That's what that. Bob Thiel told me, he said he mailed me the other one. Yeah. What do you think then about playing concerts? Does that seem to inhibit the interaction between yourself, your group, and uh, the audience? Well, uh, on concerts, I uh, the only thing that bugs me on concerts would, uh, might be the uh, hall with the poor acoustics, uh, acoustics which uh, we can't quite get the unit sound, you see. But as far as the audience, it's, it's about the same. I, don't, you know, it's good. I wasn't too impressed with the acoustics in Friday night's concert. Mm, no, I wasn't. I was sitting right down front, so I could hear most of what was going on, but even then it didn't sound... No, I couldn't feel. I couldn't feel it. So you can tell the musicians that they can't hear each other, and therefore they can't no, get themselves yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, in that. Like the wind, the wind. Yeah. <laughs> Another reason I asked you about Malcolm was because um, uh, you know I've interviewed about a dozen and a half musicians by this time, and mm. the consensus seems to be that, um, especially the younger musicians, talk about the kind of political and social issues that Malcolm talk about when they're with each other. And uh, some of them say that they try and express this in the music. Do you find that in your own groups or in the musicians you're friendly with, that uh, these issues are important to you and you do talk about them? Oh, well, they're definitely important. And as I said, uh, they are, the issues are part of what is, you know, at this time. Do you make so it, oh. naturally, as, uh, as, as musicians, we express whatever, whatever it is. Do you make a conscious attempt to express these things, or do you feel that it just... Well, I tell you, uh, myself... I make a conscious attempt. I think I could say, uh, truthfully, that in music I make, I, I make, or I have tried to make, consciously, an attempt to change, to change what I found in music. You see, and uh, in other words, I, I, I tried to say, well, this I feel could be better. You see, in my opinion. So I will try to do this to make it better. Yeah, and this is what I feel that we feel in any situation that we find in our lives. When there's something that we feel should be better, we must exert effort to try to make it better. And so it's the same socially, musically, politically, in any, in any department of your life. Most of the musicians I have talked to are very concerned with changing the society, and they do see their mm -hmm. music as an instrument by which society well, can be changed. Well, I think so. I think music is an instrument. It can uh, create the initial... It just uh, the, the thought pattern is that you can create that the change, you see, and the thinking of the people. In particular, some musicians have said that jazz is opposed to um, poverty and to suffering and to oppression, and that therefore jazz is opposed to what the United States is doing in Vietnam. Do you have any comments on that subject? On uh, the Vietnam Well, you can, you, can, you can divide it into two parts. Oh, let's see. The first part was whether you think jazz is opposed to poverty and suffering and oppression. And the second part is whether you think that, if so, jazz is therefore opposed to the United States' involvement in Vietnam. Well, in my opinion, I would say yes, because I believe that, uh, in my opinion of uh, jazz, as mm -hmm. we call it now, we talk about that later. Uh, okay, well, it, call it what you want. <laughs> yeah, call it what you want. Uh, to me, it is... It is an expression of, uh, to me, it's uh, music, and uh, this music is an expression of highest, to me, higher mm -hmm. ideal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, brotherhood is there, and I believe with brotherhood there would be no poverty, and also with brotherhood there would be no war. So I mean, to me, I agree with them in this state. That also seems to be what most of the musicians feel. Uh, David Eisenson, for example, said uh, almost the same thing when I talked with him Monday. He said, uh, well, what we're saying in our music is that we want a classless society without uh, these frictions and without the waste and without the warfare. Would you care to comment on working conditions for, uh, quote, 
jazz musicians. Do you think the jazz artists are treated uh, as they deserve to be treated, and if not, um, can you see any reasons why they wouldn't be? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, it's according to the individual. You find uh, many times a man uh, may feel that he's the situation is all right with him, where another man may say, well, that situation is no good for you. Oh, you see. So it's a matter of a man knowing himself just what he wants, you know. And uh, that way, he, I mean, it's according to his values. You see, if he, if he doesn't mind a certain sort of treatment, then uh, I'm sure he can get it, so he can find it somewhere. If he does mind it, then he doesn't have to put up with it. In my opinion, at the stage, at this stage of the game, where I'm at now, mm -hmm. stage, uh, I'm, uh, I don't care too much for playing uh, clubs consistently. Now, there was a time when this felt all right to me because my music, I felt I had to play a lot to work it out, you see. But uh, now I don't think that was absolutely where it was at, but I had to find it out myself. It's like so, moving to the country. Yeah, I had to go through this thing, you know, where, and now I don't feel this is necessary. I think that it is a matter of being able to be at home and in and to go into yourself, you know, more. In other words, like the years before I was playing, you know, every night. And uh, as such, I don't feel, I don't, uh, the, the situation involving the clubs is not an ideal one for me now. What is it about the clubs that you don't like? Well, actually, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, we don't play this uh, the set 40 minute kind of thing anymore, you see, and it's very difficult to always uh, do this kind of thing now. And now, uh, I, I, the music are uh, changing as it is. A lot of times when it's, uh, it doesn't make sense, man, to have to have somebody drop a glass or, you know, somebody ask for some money right in the middle of Jimmy Garrison's solo. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I know it's exactly. what's happening in there, you see? And uh, these kind of things that uh, are calling for some other kind of presentation, I think. In other words, these really are artists who are playing, yet they're not really being treated like artists. They're being treated like... Um, Part of the cash register. Well, They're the, just there to the, bring up the money. Yeah, I think the music is rising, and my, uh, you know, estimation is just rising into something else, and uh, so we'll have to find this kind of place, to, you know, to be played. Why do you think conditions have been so bad for um, producing art uh, by mu uh, by musicians? What do you think causes these um, poor conditions that you've spoken of? Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't really know how, how it came about, you see. Because I, I do know there was one time when a music, musician played uh, more dances, you know. And I used to play theaters and all this. And, uh, well, this uh, took away one element, you know, but still it was hard work these guys had to do. Because I remember some of one night, it was pretty, pretty difficult, you know. But it just seems that uh, the music has just been directed by uh, businessmen, I would suppose, who, who know how to arrange uh, the making of the dollar and so forth. And uh, maybe often the artist hasn't really taken the time himself to just figure out just what he's... Or if he does feel it should be presented some other way. And I think these are the things which are being thought about more than that. That's what I find, too. Do you think the fact that the, almost all of the original jazz musicians um, were black men and have continued to be throughout uh, the generations, do you think this encouraged the businessmen to take advantage of them and to uh, treat their art sort of with this contempt, uh, bringing up the cash register in the middle of a bass solo? Well, I don't know. It's... Uh most of the owners it, I noticed are white. And, uh, yeah, well, they, they, this, this could be fine. This could be. I don't know. How do you think conditions are going to be improved for the musicians? Well, there, there has to be a lot of self-help, I, I believe. And, uh, they have to work out, you know, their own problems you mean in like this area. Like, for example, the Jazz Composers Guild was trying to do by... Yeah, I, I do think that was a good idea. I, do, I really do. Yeah, I, and I don't think it's dead. I mean, 
just something that couldn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't be born at that time, but I still think it's a good idea. The first time, this is the history of all kinds of organizations in this country, is that they're not always successful the first time, but I think it's inevitable that uh, musicians are going to try yeah. and organize and protect themselves against, uh, for example, I was at the Five Spot Monday night, and uh, I figured that there are about 100 tables in there, and uh, two people at a table comes to about $7.50 a set, at three drinks a set. And that means he's making um, $750, say, a set, and he has five sets. And I know that musicians for that night aren't getting uh, anywhere near five times $750, or, or even two times $750. So actually, it turns out that uh, these businessmen are not only damaging the art, but they're even keeping people away. Yeah, it's, it's, it's putting them uptight, a lot of people, man. I, I, I feel so bad sometimes about people coming to the club. I, I can't play long enough for them because, the, the, you know, the they're working, hustling, you yeah, hustling me on. And, uh, God, they come to hear you play, and you get up, you have to play a little bit and split. Yeah, it's been, things, you know, yeah, something has to be done about it. If it hadn't been for Elvin, um, taking, you know, the bartender aside, I couldn't have stayed there because I ran out of money after a set. <laughs> Do um, the musicians who play in these newer styles look to Africa and Asia for some of their musical inspiration? I think so. I think they look all over. Do they look some places yeah, more than and inside? Yeah, and inside. <laughs> I heard you, for example, talking about making a trip to Africa um, to gather musical sources. Was that the idea? Well, I, I intend to uh, make a trip to Africa together, just together, whatever I can find, uh, particularly uh, music, the musical sources. Do you think that musicians are more interested in Africa and Asia than in Europe, as far as their music goes? Well, just well, in general. Well, uh, the, uh, the musicians have been exposed to Europe, you see. So it is the other parts that they haven't been uh, exposed to, which I think they're trying to, uh, at least I speak for myself, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, to have a rounded, you see, education. Is that the significance of those rhythmic instruments that you've incorporated into your group to give it a, a, a sort of Middle Eastern or African? Effect? Well, it's, it's, uh, if so, or maybe so, but it's just something I feel. Why do you think that the interest in Africa and Asia is growing at this particular time? Well, it's just time uh, for this to come about. That's all. It's just uh, a thing at this time. Bill Dixon suggested it might have something to do with the fact that many African nations became independent um, in the 1950s and, mm. and changed the way um, the Negroes in this country looked at themselves and uh, gave, made them more aware of the African heritage and made them more interested in going back and looking for it. Do you think there's anything to that line yeah, of thought? Yeah, that's part of oh, Another question along the same lines is, seems that group improvisation is growing in, in importance. Um, for example, what you did with Pharaoh when you were both playing simultaneously, mm -hmm. and also, of course, Ascension. Um, do you think that this is a new trend now? Or not a new trend, but do you think that this is growing in importance now, this uh, playing oh, Well, together? maybe. It, I don't know. It seems to be happening. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to stay. But it's, at this time, it doesn't seem to be. Why do you think uh, that's taking place now? I don't know why. I don't know why. It just is. Oh. But it is there. I mean, yeah. I'm not making something up when I'm No, I, I feel like I just say And another question about the new music. I've noticed that a lot of the new groups are pianoless, or even in your case where you have a piano, sometimes uh, you'll have the piano layout during a solo or parts of a solo. Why is. Um, why is this coming about at this particular time? Why the desire to de-emphasize the piano? Or rather, not to de-emphasize it, but to give it another kind of um, position in the group, another kind of role? Oh, I don't know, because, see, I still use the piano, I and I have reached a point where I feel that I don't uh, need this role. And uh, I, I might uh, assume, uh, assume that, uh, I don't know, I, maybe it's because the... Well, when you're not playing on a given uh, progression, mm -hmm. you know, well, it's, you don't need, don't really need anybody there to state these things. See? And if it would uh, get in your way to have somebody going in another direction, you trying to go in this, then uh, it'd be better for you not to have a piano. So. It seems that some of the direction that the horns are going in too 
is to get away from the 12 tone scale to play notes that really aren't on the piano. Uh, the, mm. um, the real, you know, the high pitch notes, yeah. the shrieks and scream. I don't know what you what you word you used to, de mm -hmm. to describe those words, but I think you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. The sounds that were considered um, wrong, well, still are considered wrong by some people. Um, now, if you play those notes that really aren't on the piano, and you have the piano there stating notes that are on the piano, do you feel that this is some kind of a clash that you'd rather avoid in, in, in the group? I suppose that's the way that uh, some men feel about it. As I say, I still use the piano, so I haven't reached this uh, point yet where, you know, where the piano is uh, a drag to me, you know, to that degree. The only thing I... I uh, I don't. Uh, we, we don't follow what the piano does any, anymore because we all move in uh, our own direction. So. You do. Have I like the backdrop, you know, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the sound. You do have the piano though layout, a um, fairly large part. Of well, the piano. after a while, I always uh, instruct the piano players that uh, whenever they wish, they can just lay off and uh, let it let it go on as it is. Because after a while, lots of times the piano is pianos when they get tired <laughs> you, know, well, you know you can't think anything else to play this stroll when i talked to you a couple of years ago in los angeles and i asked you if you ever would consider adding another horn in your group you said probably the thing you would do is um if you added anything you would add drums <laughs> and was that did, did you have in mind then these kinds of things that uh, i don't even know man but i guess so and that's just i feel still feel so strongly about drums I really do. You said you were listening to African music, and you noticed that uh, if you played that with some of your music, that it still all sounded right because anything you played over the drums. Yeah, I, I feel very strong about these drums. Right? Just like I, I experimented in it, but we didn't have too much to. I believe it would have worked, but uh, so, you know, Elvin and McCoy, it, it couldn't hold it. It was time for them to go. Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be two drums. It could be just drums and another rhythm instrument. Like that's what I was really referring to. Not well, yeah, I think so too. No, I think you could, you could come in different form, shape, you know, I just don't know how to do it. Though. After all, uh, the things that you were playing up there Friday night, those are rhythm instruments too, not all rhythm instruments are... are oh, that's true. That's what that's I meant true. when I said if you, that's what you had in mind. Yeah. Um, speaking of Elvin and McCoy, it reminds me of something Sun Ra said, and I'll repeat it. Uh, I'll make it clear that I don't put any faith in it, but uh, since he said it and he told me to tell you, I thought I'd pass it along. He says that uh, you hired Rashid and... Uh, as a means of driving Elvin and McCoy out of the band because you didn't want them in the band in the first place, but that was your way of doing it. Uh, do you want to answer that? Or? No, I don't. I, don't I, was, I was trying to do something. I, that was, uh, I was trying to do something. Uh, please. I was, there was a thing I wanted to do in music, see. And I, wanted, and I figured I could do two things. I could have a band that play like the way we used to play uh -huh. in a band that was uh, going in the direction that this the one I have now is going. I could combine these two with the you know, with these two concepts going. And uh, it could have been that. Oh uh, yeah, Sun Ra is quite bitter and claims that you've stolen all of your ideas from him and in fact that everybody has stolen all of their ideas from him, which so. is uh, Rather, exactly. Yeah, maybe something <laughs> too. Maybe some I look. I've heard him, and I and I know. I know that he's done. He's done some things that I've wanted to do. How do you feel about having another horn in the group now? Another saxophone? Do you feel that uh, that in any way competes with you, or that it enhances what? Uh, well, it it helps me. It, it helps me uh, stay alive sometimes because I find that physically, man, it's the pace I've been leading has been so hard. I never because have sometimes seen Sometimes I've just been a little, you know, and I've gained so much weight, you know, because sometimes I've been a little hard physically, and uh, I feel that I like to I like to have somebody there if it, in case I just don't can't get that strength. I like to have the strength in that band, you know, from somewhere. And Farrell is a very strong spirit and will, see. And that's these are the things I like to have up there. Well, strength like is the word. That, you know. It's the word for the band now. I mean, strength and energy. I had never... Energy, yeah. I like to have this energy. Too. Do you feel that, that spurs you on, the presence of, especially a man as powerful as that Farrell? Any, yeah, all the time. I, there's always got to be somebody uh, with a lot of power, you see. Because like, Elvin, now, in the old band, Elvin had this power. Mm -hmm. Do you think that I always have to have somebody there with it, you know. Rashid has it, but it, it hasn't quite unfold, unfolded completely, you know. But it's, it's, it's uh, all he needs to do is play. Yeah, that was my impression, too, that he really was feeling his way 
they had in the music. Oh, yeah. So they didn't have the confidence that Elvin had. Uh, but then, of course, Elvin, look how long Elvin was with you before yeah, that. Yeah, uh, he was there. there. Elvin was there for a couple of years, although Elvin was ready from the first time I heard Elvin, you know, he was, a, I could hear the genius there. But uh, it, uh, he had to really play, you had to start playing steadily, steadily, and every every night or whatever you're going to play. You have to keep feeling and, and, right. and it comes out. It's like it was miles, it took me around two and a half years, I think, for it to start developing, you know, like it was going to take the shape that it was going to take. That's what's so tragic about the situation of the younger musicians now. They don't have that opportunity to play together. Yeah, it certainly needs to be done. It should be happening all the time. And the men would develop uh, sooner. Don Cherry has a new record out. And it's a, I think it's a beautiful record on Blue Note. And one of the reasons I think it's so good is because this, this, here he has a group that's worked together for a few months. Yeah. And so he knows how to get put something together for all of the men that isn't just yeah, a yeah. date. I know you are, because, you know, you kept the group alive. Yeah, I should try You are listening to John Coltrane from 1966 from the Pacifica Radio Archives. Visit us online at pacificaradioarchives.org or call us at 1-800-735-0230 to get a special offering of a two-CD set of John Coltrane plus a 2005 intimate interview with Alice Coltrane conducted by the Pacifica Radio Archives. Please give us a call at 1-800-735-0230 or go online at pacificaradioarchives.org. And now back to John Coltrane. Have you listened to many of the other younger saxophonists besides Farrell? Yes, uh, Albert Ayler first. Uh, very close to me. And, uh, Could you see any? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Could you see any relationship between what you were doing and what he was doing? In other words, do you think that he had developed out of some of your ideas? I don't. Not necessarily. I think uh, what he's doing is uh, it seems to be uh, moving mu- music into even higher frequency to me it appears that some of the things that you did like maybe where i left off maybe where he started <laughs> was oh it. well in a sense that's, that's what i meant yeah um i listen to not to say that he you know would uh, copy this or that but it's just that he you know he filled an area mm-hmm. that it seemed that i hadn't uh, gotten to it seems like a sense. that um to me it appeared that your solo on chasing the train chasing the train uh, that he had developed some of the ideas that you put out there, and he had um, expressed them in his own way, but that this was one of the points from which he had begun. Had you ever thought of it in that light? No. Do you ever listen to that record much? Only when, at the time that it came out, I, I used to listen to it and wonder what happened to me. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, it was, it was a sort of surprising thing to hear this back, you see, because, I don't know, it, just, it came back another way. How did it come back? Didn't it? Well, it, it, it was it was it was a little longer than I thought it was, mm-hmm. and uh, it it had quite a bit of a fairly, fairly good amount of intensity in it, you know, which I, I hadn't quite gotten in into a recording before. You were pleased with it. I think it's to a, you know to that to a degree. I mean, not not that I could sit there with it and you know love it forever. Well, I know you'd never be pleased with anything you do for longer than a week. It just felt <laughs> I realized that uh, you know, I'd have to do that a better, <laughs> you see. And then, uh, I think it's a remarkable record, and I also think you ought to go back and listen to it. <clears throat> Maybe so. Because Yeah, because I, I see a lot of the younger... Well, I don't see any saxophonist now who isn't playing something that you have at least sketched out before. No, I don't know. Archie, seems to me, is the one who's gone further in, directing his own, in the direction of his own style. But if you listen to Archie three or four years ago with Cecil Taylor... He was playing those up and down triad things that you know that they're really one of your uh, uh, trademarks. 
But maybe uh, you don't want. Maybe you know you'd rather not think about that. So. No, you know, because like it's a it's a big reservoir, man, that we all dip out of. <laughs> so, you know, and I like you know a lot of times uh, you find that a lot of those things. I I, I listened to John Gilmore mm-hmm. kind of closely before I made Chase in the Train too. So some of those things on there are really direct influences of, by the, of listening to this guy. You see? But then I don't know who he could listen to. So it's, uh, right. it's right. So really, it is a reservoir, yeah. yeah. It's too bad that he's never had a recording that demonstrated what he could do. I really, with this. Yeah, I like him. Well, everybody talks about him, and yeah, I've listened to you know, a number of Sun Ra records, which I guess is the only place you can really hear him. Yeah, and, well, he uh, probably he, had to hear him stretch on his arm or something. Right. I've heard him do some things After Chasing the Train came out and then Impressions came out, you did um, a sort of change of pace. You remember you did the album with Duke and the Ballads and yeah. the Johnny Harmon album. Um, whose idea were those albums? Were they yours or were they Impulses? Well, I tell you, I had some trouble at that time. I, I, I did a foolish thing. I, I got dissatisfied with my mouthpiece. <laughs> and I, I had some work done on this thing. And instead of uh, making it better, it it, it 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 ruined it. And it really uh, I, it discouraged me, you know, a little bit because I couldn't. There were certain aspects of that of playing that certain fast thing that I was reaching for that I couldn't get, you know, pushed because I damaged this thing. So I just had to curtail it. Until <laughs> and, you got another. Well, and actually, I never found another, but after so much of just laying around and making these kind of things, I said, well, what the hell, you know? I might as well go ahead and do the best I can. But it, it, at that moment, it was so vivid in my mind, the difference in the in the in what I was getting on the horn. It was so vivid in my mind until I couldn't do it, because as soon as I do it, I'd hear it, and it just discouraged me, see? But after a year or so passed, well, I, I'd forgotten. <laughs> That's funny, because, you know, I think I know your music as thoroughly as any non-musician. And yeah, that wouldn't have been apparent to me. Either. Yeah, well, that's 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 a funny thing. That's, that's one of the mysteries. And to me, as soon as I put that on in my mouth, I could hear, I could feel, it, you know. And just, so I just stopped. I just went into other things. The reason I asked that was because you recall that was the time you had, around the time you had Eric in and out of the band. Yeah. And uh, there was a whole wave of really hostile criticism. Yeah, and, and sure this, 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 this was, well, all of this was at the same time, so you can see how, how it was. I needed all the strength I could have at that time, and, and maybe some of these things might have caused me to feel that, well, you know, I, damn, I can't get what I want out of this mouthpiece, so I'll work on it. Do you think then this might have undermined your self-confidence to a degree? It could have. It could have. Why do you think there's been all this um, hostility to the new music, especially in your oh, case? Oh, man, I... I never could figure it out, you know, and uh, I wouldn't, I couldn't even venture to answer it, nah, just, uh, because uh, as, as as I told them then, I just felt that they didn't understand. <laughs> you feel that they were making... So I feel that they don't, didn't understand. Do so. you think that they were making a conscientious and as thorough an attempt to understand as they could have? At times, I didn't feel they were, because I, I did uh, offer to them, I didn't think in this article, and down behind Ask, I asked if any of you men were interested in, uh, you know, trying to understand, let's get together and let's talk about it, you know. I felt that they were really genuinely interested or thought there was something here that they, instead of just condemning it, what you don't know about, if you want to discuss it, let's talk about it. But no one ever, you know, came for them, so I don't think they were really, they didn't want to know what <laughs> I had to say about it. I think it frightened them, uh, Bill. Well, uh, it might have. Bill said, you know, he talk, we talked about this at great length, and he said, well, these guys, see, I was taking them years to learn how to pick out got rhythm on the piano, and now you know, the new music comes along and undermines their entire career, which is uh, built around understanding tunes yeah. based on... Yeah, it could be, a, I dug it like that, too. I said, well, it could be a real drag for the guy's career if he figures this is something that he won't be able to cope with, and he won't be able to write about, you see, and... Uh, if he can't write about it, he can't make a living at this. Yes, and then I realized that, so I quieted down. I didn't. I wouldn't allow myself to become too uh, hostile back, you know, in return. Although there was a time I, I, I kind of froze up on the people that down people. I froze because I don't know. I felt that there was something that it wasn't. I didn't. I felt that they were letting their weakness 
direct their actions, which I didn't feel it should have. Of course, yeah. that, that makes me want to kill all those people because. Well, <laughs> man, you know. Because um, yeah, I, I get so much pleasure out of your music. Yeah, well, the, test, the test was for me. That's who it was for. You know, if they, they could do what they want to do. The thing was for me to remain firm in what I was doing. But it, that, that was a funny time, a particular period in my life because I went through quite a few changes, you know, like the home life, everything, man. I just went through something. everything I was doing. It did. The perfect wrong time to hit you. <laughs> everything, yeah, everything I was doing, you like that. Yeah. But it was a hell of a test for me, and uh, coming out of it, it's just like I always said, man, when you go through these crises and like, when you come through them, I'll come out of them, you're definitely strong. Yeah, if <laughs> you, you, know, if you in a great sense, it. yeah. Did Impulse, did the reaction of Impulse to these um, adverse criticisms have anything to do with those records that we talked about? Uh, the ballads and the... The ballads and the... Well, I don't know. Uh, I think Impulse was interested in having a, uh, what they might call uh, a balanced sort of thing, or a diverse sort of a, a catalog, you know. And uh, I'd find nothing wrong with this myself. You see, I, li I like, in fact, most of the songs I even write now uh, have been written. The ones which I really consider songs are ballads. <laughs> So there's a there's something there that I mean I really love love these things. Oh, they're beautiful. And um, I there's felt no question about and that. these bows that came out were definitely ones which I felt at this time, and I, I chose them. And, uh, they seemed to be something that was laying around in my mind from <laughs> my you know youth or somewhere that I just had to do. And they came at, at this time when uh, the confidence in what I was doing on the horn. It flagged, it, it seemed to be just the time to clean that up. And the Johnny Hartman, the man that I, I had stuck up in my mind somewhere, I just felt something about him, you know, I don't know what it was. And uh, I liked his sound. I thought there was something there I had here, you know. So I looked him up and did that other one, see. And, uh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't regret doing those things at all. You shouldn't. No, I don't. Because that, that I've heard Johnny Hartman went with, in my opinion, went with the quartet perfectly. Those yeah, are, those know. are the only six songs I know the words to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Is there eight? Is it six or eight? Yeah. Six, yeah, yeah six, six right here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I regret none of those. No, no. You but the only thing I do, I, do, I regret not uh, having, you know, kept that same attitude, which was, you know, I'm going to do no matter what. Mm -hmm. That was just the attitude in the beginning. But uh, as I say, there was a whole lot of reasons why I, <laughs> these things didn't happen. There ups and downs, and I was one of the yeah, downs. Do you think that um, learning how to play the soprano had anything to do with uh, the change in your style from what it had been, say, in 57 years? Definitely, yeah. Certainly did. How so? Uh, could you well, spell it, uh, that out? Well, the soprano, by being this small instrument, I found that uh, playing the lowest note on it was like playing the, one of the middle notes in the tenor. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I, after I got to, I could, uh, my amateur would allow me to make the upper notes, mm -hmm. I found that I would, I would play all over this instrument, you see. And on tenor, I hadn't always played all over it because I was playing certain ideas which would just run into my ranges, octaves, mm -hmm. But by playing on the soprano and becoming accustomed to playing from that low B flat on up, it soon got so when I went to tenor, I found myself doing the same thing, you see. This, cause the change or the willingness to, to change and just try to play the, you know, as much of the instrument as possible. Did it give you a new rhythmic conception too? Or? I think so. I think so. Uh, a new, and, uh, a new shape came out of this thing and patterns, uh, you know, the way the patterns would fall. It seemed to me that after you started playing soprano, and particularly after My Favorite Things, then you started feeling that same kind of a plus uh, on the tenor that, that hadn't been there in your, I, 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 in your work quite possible, before. Quite possible. In fact, soprano started, well, soprano is one of the reasons I started getting uh, dissatisfied with that tenor mouthpiece, see? Because the, the sound of that soprano was actually so much closer to me in my ear, or oh, there's something about the presence of that sound, you know, that, that to me, I didn't want to admit it, but to me it was seeming like it was better than the tenor, or I liked it more, see? I didn't want to admit this damn thing because I said, well, the tenor is my horn. This is my favorite. 
But uh, just to try to, uh, maybe it's just the fact that it's a high instrument, it, it just, it, it starts pulling my conception, you see. <laughs> really was headed going into this instrument. How do you feel about the two horns now? Well, the tenor is the power horn, definitely. Uh, but soprano, there's a, there's still something there, and just the just the voice of it that, that, that I can It's really beautiful. Awesome. That I really like. You know? Do you regard the soprano as an extension of the tenor, or? Uh... Well, at first I did, but I don't know. It's it's just now it's, it's another voice. It's just another. Do you, ever, do you ever use the two horns on the same piece like you did on spirituals? I, I think that's the only time I've done that. Sometimes in clubs, uh, if, if I feel that I might do something like this, start on one and end on another. You know. But I think that's the only one on record. What prompted Pharaoh to take out the alto? Uh, was that to get away from the tenor sound? I don't, know. Sound, or I don't know. This is talking over with him. No, this is something he wanted to do, and uh, at, the, at about the same time, I decided I wanted to get one. So we both got it. I haven't heard you play the alto. Did you play it much in? The... I played it in Japan. I played it in Frisco a little bit, but I've had a little trouble on the, uh, with the intonation of it. It's mm -hmm. uh, Japanese make that they uh, new thing they're trying out, so they gave us these horns to try. And mine has to be adjusted at uh, certain uh, points where they're not quite in tune, so I don't play it, but I like it. I saw a picture of you with a flute. <laughs> yeah. Are you playing that too now? I'm learning. I'm learning. You're always learning, aren't you? Uh, I hope so. I'm always trying to learn. Um, I looked at the downbeat critics poll two years in a row, and both year, this year and last year. Both, year I noticed, both years I noticed this, that uh, European critics are much more in favor of the new music than the American. Almost, say, 50% or 60% of them would vote for new musicians, yeah. whereas only, say, about a quarter of the American. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, is this what you found in, in Europe? And, in, in, well, let me just say, is yeah. this what you found outside the United States, that your music is more favorably received by uh, the critics, the power structure, shall we say, than, uh, in, than in the U.S.? Well, I tell you, uh, in the new music, I believe in that, and when I say new music, I mean most of the younger musicians mm -hmm, are starting mm -hmm, out. Mm -hmm. I know that they are definitely have found a quicker reception in Europe than they have here. And uh, when I started it, it was a little different because I started through Miles Davis, mm -hmm, who was an, mm -hmm. accept, an accepted musician, you see. And uh, they got used to me here in the States. Now, when they first heard me with Miles here, they did not like it. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. So the anything, it's, it's just one of those things, anything that they haven't heard yet, it's a little different. Uh, at first, they're going to reject it at first. Man. But the time, it will roll around, the time when they will like it. Now, the states, by being here with Miles and running around the country with him, I be, they, they heard more of me here, and then consequently, they became accepted before they did in Europe because they hadn't heard me in Europe. But we found when we went to Europe the first time, they, well, it was a shock to them there, you know, like they booed me and everything in Paris because, uh, well, it is, you know, they weren't ready for this. But uh, now I find the last time I was in Europe, it seems that the new music, they, they, they're really, you know, they open up, man. You can hear it there better than they do here. I think that part of this is because what's happening in the new music is analogous to what's happened in painting, say, in sculpture and literature. And the people who appreciate jazz are, in Europe are much more aware of this than... I see. than what do you... Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, you know see, in, in I Europe, jazz is regarded as a serious art, whereas here... It's regarded as, well, I don't know, Whatever it's, it's it is. part of the nightclub <laughs> business. Or, yeah. Otherwise, you couldn't have a magazine like uh, Down What were you looking for, John? Do you want some cigarettes? No, I'm just sitting up because my back is wet. I'm just yeah. trying to get up. Trying to get up. Yeah. yeah, I know Albert is going back to Europe, and I know that there are many of the younger musicians who want to get away from the States because yeah. of that thing. They, they just don't feel that there's any hope for them here. Do you remember Third Stream Music? What was called Third Stream Music? Mm -hmm. Did that? Did, did you ever want to feel much of a an inner urge to play that kind of music? No. Why, why do you think it didn't catch on with the musicians? Is there anything about it that uh, suggests why it was uh, never very popular with them? Well. I don't know. Well, it, like it was an attempt. It was an attempt to, to create something, I think, with uh, more of uh, 
label, you see, than uh, true true evolution. You mean it didn't evolve naturally out of the desires of the musicians? I don't, I don't think so. Well, it maybe it did. I, I don't. I can't say that. It was an attempt to do something, which is uh, that the evolution is about trying to, you know. But there's something uh, in evolution that man, it, it just happens when it's ready. Uh, you know, although you have to try also. And this just seemed uh, it wasn't really where it was coming from. You know, it was. Uh, it was a, what was it, an attempt to blend, to wed uh, the two musics, right? Mm -hmm, Is this mm -hmm, what it mm -hmm. really was? I, well, I suppose that's what it was supposed to be. Yeah. You said that, uh, talking about um, saxophone players, that there was a common pool that everybody uh, dipped into. Maybe here there wasn't enough of that pool, I mean, or uh, for people to dip into. Well, I, I just think it, it wasn't time. It, it, hadn't, uh, it was an attempt to do something at a time when it just wasn't time for this to happen. And uh, therefore, it, uh, it it wasn't lasting. But uh, there may there may have been some things that came out of this that, that have been beneficial in promoting the, the final change, which is coming. See? So nothing is really wasted, although it might you know it might appear to fail or not succeeded, you know the way that the men felt they would have decided to. But Even the mistakes can be instructive if you know how to utilize them. <laughs> Do you make any attempt, or do you feel you should make any attempt to educate your audience in ways that are, aren't musical? But it's, it's obvious you want your audience to understand what you're doing musically, mm -hmm. but uh, do you feel that um, you want them to understand other things, too, and that you have some kind of responsibility to Sure, I, I try to feel this, and uh, this is one of the things I'm concerned about now. I just don't know how to go about this. I, 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 I don't want to... I want to find out just how I should do it, you know. I think uh, it's going to have to be uh, very subtle. I mean, it has to, you can't you can't ram philosophies down anybody's throat, and uh, the music is enough, <laughs> you know, and that's philosophy. But uh, I think the best thing I can do at this time is just try to uh, get myself in shape, you know, and uh, know myself. If I can do that, then uh, I'll just play, you see, <laughs> and leave it at that. Then I, I, I believe that will do it, you know, if I really can get to myself and then and, and really and then be just as I feel and I should be and play it, you see. And I think they'll get it because music goes a long way and it really is, uh, it, 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 it can influence. That's how I got interested in all those things I was talking about earlier. I mean, and Malcolm X and so forth. I may, might not have come to it or come to it as fast if it hadn't been for the music. Because that was my first introduction to something beyond my own horizons and it made me think about yeah, the world I was living in. That's what I'm sure, man. I'm sure. I'm, I'm really sure of this thing. And uh, as I say, um, there, there, there are things uh, which, as far as spirituality is concerned, which I very important to me at this time, and uh, I've got to grow through certain, you know, phases of this to other understanding and uh, more, you know, consciousness and awareness of just what it is that I'm supposed to, you know, understand about, and I'm sure all this will be part of the music, which is, to me, you know, I, I feel I want to be a force for good. And the music, too. Everywhere. <laughs> You know, I want to be a force for real, for real good. In other words, I know that there are bad forces. You know, I know that there are forces out here that bring suffering to others and misery to the world. But I want to be the opposite force. I want to be a force which is truly for good. Um, I don't have any more of my prepared questions to ask you. Mm -hmm. Well, my improvised questions to ask you, because <laughs> you know, I had a lot of questions here that were just related to you. All those questions about music, I don't ask the other uh, the other musicians. But I've had a, you know, I've had a, always had a very special interest in your work, so I took this off. I don't know when I'll ever get the chance to sit you down on the tape recorder. <laughs> so I took this yeah. chance. Do you have anything else that you'd like to get on here? Uh, I think you man, well, you just about covered it. I believe. Just about covered it. 
would you mind, or do you have any objection if I uh, publish this uh, interview someplace? Well, the only thing I would like is that you might send me before uh, you transcript. Do. Okay, yeah, sure, the transcript. Okay. Sure. The reason I say that is because you are now a person of such significance and such influence that uh, things coming from the mouths of other people, which could dis be disregarded, cannot be so easily disregarded when That's they come true. from you. That's true. And uh, I know, since from what you said, that uh, that you're sincere in wanting to be a force for good, and I think this is one way of getting it in front of a lot of people mm -hmm. is by doing this sort of thing. So uh, I'll. Type, I'll have a transcript typed up and send it to you, and you can have Yeah, it. well, that's, 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 that's the only thing I ask. Yeah. I'll indicate where the shopping carts were rattling on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can take me back and dump me at the transcription. Right. What time is it now? It's, uh, it's about uh, 12 after 1. What time is it change? Uh, about 1.30. So we, we, we to, I'll just leave this thing running until we get there. Yeah. So something else may yeah, come up. Put it here. I hope you didn't think those questions were too silly. No, man. Right? Uh, much better than I could ever do. Well, I can't uh, play the I music, think, you know, I so I have to think about it. It's an easy job to, to really come up with questions. Either. I don't think it's an easy job. I mean, you have to be thinking about something yourself. Yeah, that, well, that's the thing. You know, if you There's can't play the music. Luther. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. How about <laughs> that? They named it after the record, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was a beautiful tip. It looks nice from the outside. Yeah. Yeah, if you can't play it, then you, and if you're going to write about it, you have, a, I think, a, an obligation to, to do it as conscientiously that. as possible. Yeah, I really do. And uh, always when it's a question of uh, your opinion versus the musician's opinion to give the benefit of the doubt to the musician, because he knows the music far better than you'll ever know it. In other words, you have to be humble. But, uh, I understand that, yeah, I believe it. A lot of... A lot of guys aren't them. Well, they, they get arrogant because they think they have some kind of power. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's one of the causes of this arrogance. I have power. Mm -hmm. But then you lose your true power. That's right. Which is to be part of all, you see. And the only, only way you can be part of all is to understand to it. To understand it, yeah. And you have, that means you have to do something you don't understand. You have to go humbly to it. You don't, you don't go to school and say, sit down and say, I know what you're getting ready to teach me, you know? You, you sit there and you, you learn, and you open your mind, you have You have to be quiet, you have to be still to do it. That's what so annoyed me about all of that stuff that they were saying about you in 61. And oh, that was, well, that was hell, that was brilliant. I couldn't believe it, you know? It just seemed so preposterous. It was so ridiculous, man. It just, I just, it, that's that's what bugged me. It was just so absolutely ridiculous because they they made it appear that we didn't even know this uh, first thing about music. Mm -hmm. The first thing, <laughs> yeah. and then we were really trying to, uh, you know, push things on because they never stand still. No. Never well, I know that later generations. And will Eric, live. man, as sweet as this cat was, and. Musician in the world. It hurt me, you know. To see him. To see him get hurt in this thing, you see. Do you think that this possibly contributed to uh, the fact that he died so young? I don't think so. I don't know. But uh, Eric was a strong cat. I don't know. Nobody knows what caused it. Eric <laughs> when he passed from this. There's a mystery about it. Well, I didn't mean that it was directly, but I mean. I mean, there's a. Yeah. yeah. The whole scene, man. He well, he couldn't work. He couldn't work. That's what I so, meant, really. Yeah. I don't know, just how he, the emotional. He always seemed to be a very cheerful young man. So I don't think that would put him, you know, that way. I don't think so because he, he had an outlook to his life that was very, very good, optimistic, and he had this sort of a thing of uh, friend, friendliness, you know, to everyone. He's a real friend. He's the type of man who could be, he was as much a friend to a guy he just met today as he was the one he'd known for 10 years, you know? He, so this, this kind of person like that, I don't think it would really, uh, you know, hurt him to, to the point where he would do something to hurt himself, consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. you know? That friendliness is one of the things that has impressed me about the musicians here. 
Um, I really didn't expect it to be greeted with open arms because I am an outsider after all. And yet I've been amazed constantly at how eager the musicians were to cooperate once they got the idea that I was sincere mm-hmm. and that this wasn't a joke or, or, or a, a con yeah. or something of that nature. Yeah, well, man, I think that's all that's... All we need is uh, sincerity, you know. You know. But empathy. What is that? What is that word? That's yeah. the word. Empathy yeah. means identification with other people. Um, becoming. Becoming what we really are. Yes, right? and, and and being considerate of other people and not yeah. trying to uh, damage them with uh, treating them, in other words, with the same um, care that we would want to be treated ourselves. True. Hey, there is a restroom this time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a hotel somewhere. A motel, rather. Not a yeah, hotel. not a hotel. No, no, no hotel. Do you live far outside of uh, uh, wherever we are now? Well, I guess I'm about four or five miles down the road. <laughs> <laughs> you really sound like Farmer John. <laughs> <laughs> you ran through my boyhood. I grew up in my boyhood. Yeah, man, when I come up here and I had to do all, get everything I'm going to get, you know. That's right, because you... I got to go to the store and do all that because I don't want to come back up here. Yeah, well, I've, I've, I've gone through this. I don't know. I think I want to get closer to town because I don't know. Maybe there's something I can do in music, you know. Maybe I can mm-hmm. get a place, a little room or something to play in. Oh, Everybody else has a, those lofts down in Cooper. Yeah. yeah. But I would, you know, I mean, that's not really suitable for you anymore. It's okay. It's one thing when you're in your 20s, but... Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to laugh, but I don't know. Maybe there's something I can get to play in, just some place to, to be able to work, you know, I'll give somebody some work in. Where do you play at home? Hmm? Where do you play at home? Uh, I've, I heard you practicing over the phone. I thought that was what I heard. Yeah, well, anyway, I just, I've got a... There's a room over the garage out there that I'm getting fixed now to... The, I think it's going to be my practice. Room. You know, sometimes you <laughs> build a room and it ends up, you ain't still going to the toilet. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I hope I like it. But, but I, was, I was in the living room. I just, anyway, I keep a horn on the piano. And I have a horn in my bedroom. My flute's usually back there because when I go there, I'm tired. So I lay down and practice. Um, About how many hours a day do you play, would you say? Not too much at this time. I find that it's only when something is, is trying to come through, you know, mm-hmm. that I, I really practice, and then it's, it's, it's no, I don't know how many hours, you know, it's just all day, Until, on oh. and off, yeah. But at this time, it's, uh, it's nothing that's coming out now. It's just uh, I'm kind of taken in. I was very surprised to hear you <coughs> practicing at all, because uh, yeah. I just couldn't conceive of what you could find to practice, yeah, well, but I know it isn't like that. No, <laughs> you know, I need to practice. It's just that I want something to practice, and I'm trying to That's it. Mind, That's find out what it is that I want to, the area that I, you know, want to get into. You've been listening to John Coltrane interview conducted by Frank Kofsky from KPFK 90.7 Los Angeles FM from the Pacifica Radio Archives. Please visit us online at pacificaradioarchives.org or call us toll free at one eight hundred seven three five zero two three zero.